so major cliffhanger in the last episode. Why are we getting uh, two of these? Double trouble with Professor Anderson. Um, I purposely, while that video was rendering, did not go in to look and see how to fix it, um, which I usually will at least try and do to save us a little bit of time, but I wanna go through the process together. So one of the things is whatever's rendered. So again, picture this, this page is being created dynamically on the fly based on the code. There is no longer a static file sitting there to access, it's being built. And so we get to see by the time it gets to us though, it is built. And so with, whenever we're working with uh, .NET and we're, we see something like this, we can right click and say view the page source and it will show us exactly what it rendered from .NET to us. And I can see that um, in the body that we have this image and everything like that, but then it also then renders the same thing again. And so why is that doing that twice? And I don't know the answer yet. I'm just saying you can see this is the finished product. This was what was rendered and sent down to the client. And so again, I try to hard refresh. That's control, click. That's not doing anything. And um, you know, I can do something like run in, in private. So let me grab the address and I can try in private because this should not have any cache coming in and it still pulls it up. So there's something in my code that's telling it to do it twice. So if I look in here and I say, well, where's the image tag um, in the layout file? That's where I would expect it. We're going to have it there. That's what I wanted was we're going to have this image tag and the, the header. And so then I go into my uh, index.html and sure enough, there it is. I forgot to take out this part. So I took out a lot of stuff. I didn't take that out. You probably caught that. I'm a little slower than you though. So now when we run this, we'll get this um, nice file that now when we go to the other page, so when I go to home.fanmail, it will still have that uh, the heading and the subheading and the picture. I don't know why the picture is not showing up. Um, oh, let's see. What What is the actual? No, it should show up. Because I'm getting it from, you know, where is it coming from? And the source is ganderson.jpg. I don't know, actually. But I'm not going to worry about that one for a second. We got bigger fish to fry. I'll have to figure that one out. But, but uh, I mean, it's showing that it's it's seeing there's an image there. Let's look and see the page source. Maybe I will fry it. So if I go to ganderson.jpg, it's not finding it in the home folder. But why is it on the other one? Let's go pull that up. Let's go back. View page source. And it is finding it on that one. Really the way we typically work this out, and, and again, this is not the purpose of this video, but um, as we run this, typically inside our www root folder, we would add a folder called images. And then this would actually be inside the images folder. And then when we access it, we would have a little thing here that says go up to the root and then access our, um, well, where is it? Let me save. So go up to our root, the source of this picture, go up to the root, and then, where's my images? Let me put it back at the root for a second and just try that. And there it is. So now when I run it and try this, Then when I go to home slash fan mail, and there it is. So it was not taking the root folder. Now I got a different thing to figure out, which is why does it not recognize my image folder? Drop it back in there. Let me just try putting it in there. So slash image 
slash Ganderson JPEG. Run that. And now it's working. I don't know why it's not uh, IntelliSensing that folder, but that folder's there. Okay, well that wasn't even the purpose of this video. We gotta get to the purpose of this video. This is crazy, we gotta hurry. All right, so in the fan mail, um, we're gonna find out that there's uh, what we call tag helpers in the world of ASP.NET. And so instead of typing in like we would typically need to do um, the ID and other information about um, you know, the class or whatever, then it gives us things called uh, tag helpers. So I can say instead ASP4 and then go put in the name of the field that we're doing it and it will go populate automatically all the information related to this input field that it needs for the form and uh, for the database and for connecting with the model and everything else it needs. But you see it's not recognizing this command currently. And so I need to go bring in some razor code that will recognize that command. And so I come in here and say, uh, I have to remind myself, hang on a second. Uh, at, so this is razor code now using, and I want to add a tag helper. And the tag helper is going to be, uh, you have to type in this whole line. Uh, anyway, blah, 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 blah. You have to go type in all this information to get the tag helpers to work. And on every page you have it, you have to do that over and over and over again. Or let's say I create a model, and we're not using any data in this particular example, but let's say I was, so I'll go in and create a, a model, which is a class file, and I'll just call it test. And I go in and create that, that model and we're not gonna do anything with this currently, but let's say I wanted to use something inside this test. Well, if I'm on the fan mail page, I have to say at using the name of the project. So whatever the name of the project is, um, in our case, my first dot models, and then I don't have to type in the full path every time but if all of my pages are using models and if or if I'm, I'm bringing those tag helpers on every page using add tag helper, add tag helper, there we go. Um, if I'm doing this on every page, so if I have to do it on this page and then I need the same thing over here on this page and I need it on the next page and the next page, if I'm doing this in all my views, this is the point. I also, there's a file called, if I right click on views and say add, and then go to new item, there's a razor view imports. And the razor view imports that's in the general notice, it's at the root of the views folder. The imports that we do in this file will apply to every view in the views folder. And so if I want this line, in index H, or where did I put it, in the fan mail. If I'm using the models in every single view, then I can take, and rather than typing in individually within each view, I can go into my view imports file, and I can drop that line in there. And then if I'm adding tag helpers, which again, we'll talk much more about those in the future. Don't worry about it for now. But I just want to prove this point. Then, then in the view, in, uh, imports file, I can say add tag helper, and the one we do is um, asterisk uh, Microsoft dot ASP net core, and I've had so many students get this wrong, and their program's not working right, and we go try all sorts of hard stuff, and then re realize we just typed this in wrong, because it has to be typed in exactly like this, tag helpers. Um, we go type all this in and now when we save this, this is now applied to the index.cshtml file and the fanmail cshtml file. And whatever views we'll be creating from then forward, whatever's in this view imports file at the root level of that shared views folder will be applied to all views. Spencer out.